Well, the summer months often have us focusing our attention on our water supply and for many of us, our water bills as such. Texas Monthly has been taking a good look at the topic all across the state, and they have a new series of articles we want to talk about where they ask the very simple question, who is wasting our water? And it's a very fair question. Jason Hyde is the editor who oversaw the coverage for Texas Monthly. Uh, so we know water and oil don't mix first and foremost, but Texas Monthly did find that the two were kind of linked when it comes to the oil and gas boom here in Texas. Can you talk a little more about how this has impacted the state's water supply? Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, what we focused on fracking and uh, the water that is used in hydraulic fracturing that is sent down into the earth in order to uh, spur oil and gas to, to come up uh, to the surface. And the fracking industry put six million barrels of water into the ground each day. And half of that in the Permian Basin is coming from that region's aquifers, which are already quite depleted. So you're taking fresh water that otherwise could be used for other purposes and you're using it for hydraulic fracturing. Now there is an economic benefit uh, to fracking. So there's certainly a reason that that water gets used, but we make the argument that much of that water is actually wasted because when you put water into the earth for fracking, you actually end up getting much more water coming back up to the surface, up to 15 million barrels a day of water actually rise to the surface. Unfortunately, that water can't be reused in fracking because it's not suitable for that purpose. So uh, instead, the industry goes back and uses fresh water that otherwise could be used for other purposes and doesn't recycle that water. So the industry could do that. They could uh, they could recycle that water, they could treat that water so that it could be recycled for fracking, but they don't do that because it's it's too expensive for them. There's cheaper options. So our, our story makes the case that the industry will either have to be required or incentivized to reuse more of that water. Because as of right now, they're using as much fresh water and fracking as every household in the entire city of Dallas. And if you throw in, uh, let, let's just say, throw in a drought on top of all of that in, in a certain region and with the amount of water you're talking about coming directly from an aquifer, that, that leads us down a really, really bad road. I think that's fairly obvious for everybody to see. Uh, wasteful water usage in a general sense, there's one example in, in, in your findings with Texas Monthly. What else did you find as far as any possible wasting of water? Well, the two other major uh, water wasters that we found were one, the way that water is managed in the state of Texas. We operate under what's for groundwater, for all the water that's underground in aquifers. All that water is governed by what's known as a rule of capture. And it has been that way for uh, over 100 years now, 120 years now. And what that basically does is it makes any water that is under your land your private property, and you are, according to the state, entitled to use any of it that you reasonably need or needs that you can justify. And that really has led to uh, cases where people are using excessive amounts of water, even to the detriment of their neighbors. And the, that creates this situation where we have unfettered development throughout the state where you know, with all the great population booming that we're having here in Texas, we aren't making new developments, new subdivisions that are going up around all our major metro areas account for the water that they're going to pull from the land. So they come in, a new development comes in, uh, puts in a well, pipes up the water, and they are, in some senses, not accountable to how they are affecting the other communities around them. And the problem is that there's no state agency that really oversees all groundwater in the state. Instead, it's a, a patchwork of local groundwater districts that are doing this. And sometimes those districts are working at cross purposes. They also have very limited ability to really limit how much water gets used. So the regulatory framework of how water is governing this Texas is a major waster in this state. The other uh, major factor that we point to is, is leaking pipes that all of the utilities in the state waste billions and billions of gallons that leak out of aging pipes. These are pipes that are broke or they've just gotten old and they need to be replaced. And local utilities don't always have the money to go in and do that replacement. 
you know, in this past legislative session, the state actually did authorize a billion dollars into a Texas water fund, some of which could be used for repairs. But that really is just a pittance compared to what needs to be uh, what needs to be done. You know, we waste enough water out of these leaky pipes. We lose it into the ground, into the soil. And this is water that has been that, that utilities have already spent the money to treat to drinkable standards. It's enough for Austin, El Paso, Fort Worth, Laredo, and Lubbock combined. That's how much water we waste. Yeah, and and the reality is, is we have an aging infrastructure across many different uh, you know parts of our world that we live in on a daily basis. Water just being one of them, obviously. Uh, you guys also in the uh, look look through everything here found some useful lessons when it comes to protecting the water supply. And I want to hear from you on that because you know our, our as laymen, our first thought on protecting the water supply for us is, for instance, homeowners is sprinkle when you're supposed to sprinkle your yard, right? You know, don't exceed the limit and all that kinds of stuff. But what do we talking about? What can we learn from El Paso? What can we learn from San Antonio that you talked about? Yeah, um, you know, there's obviously things that individual homeowners can do to conserve water. But when we're talking about a statewide crisis that we're having, where we are, our groundwater is disappearing out of many of our aquifers, particularly in the western dry parts of the state, it's really going to be up to these utilities, these cities, even the state government to figure out ways that we can preserve maximum amounts of water. And El Paso is a great case study because they've already been living, you know, in a desert for decades. They've already had to take a lot of these measures that as the state gets drier, as climate change just dries out the state, it makes it a hotter, drier place. More of it becomes more arid. More of it moves towards more what El Paso has already been experiencing for a long time. Now, Paso, for that reason, has already been taking a lot of the steps that more and more cities are going to have to take. Number one around those is reusing wastewater. In, in too many places, still what happens is once that you know water gets used in your house, gets, gets flushed out, gets moved out of, the, out of there, that it, it gets treated slightly and then released down the river. Or so some other community ends up using that water and putting in the supply instead of your community reusing that water. So what El Paso does and what some cities, what some other cities do also to a smaller scale is reuse much of that water for irrigation of parks or industrial purposes. And El Paso is actually even going a step further. They will soon, I think, I think it begins in 2027, they're going to start taking wastewater, water that, you know, came out of people's houses, came through toilets, through showers, through, you know, through uh, washing machines, and they're going to treat it to back t directly to a potable standard and introduce it directly back into the drinking water supply. And that's something no one else, anyone else in the country is doing. It's because they've had to do this for so long that they really do maximize every drop of water. And that's what more and more of Texas is going to have to do. And we talk about how Austin is the first city, first city in Texas to actually require some of these large commercial buildings to reuse much of their water. We point to a building in San Antonio, the Credit Human uh, headquarters building that actually has uh, collectors on its roof where it's capturing rainwater, pumping it into a system, treating it, and using that in the system instead of pulling potable drinking water for those purposes into the building. Jason Hyde, uh, in-depth and wonderful, wonderful detail. Uh, the one man in my life I have met who knows more about water than anybody I've ever met before. Uh, great Unfortunately. Back yeah, no, but great background, man. <laughs> Thanks for the deep dive and the discussion. We appreciate it. And you can take a look at all of Texas Monthly's reporting on texasmonthly.com. We'll be right back.